Joining me now is David Martin, senior national security correspondent for CBS News, Frank Miller, principal at the Scowcroft Group, former special assistant to George W. Bush, and former senior director for defense policy and arms control on the National Security Council staff, and Hans Christensen, the director of the Nuclear Information Project at the Federation of American Scientists. David, you've worked more than 30 years at the Pentagon. What do you make of all this? Well, you know, this is sort of where I came in. I came in uh, uh, at the end or near the end of the, uh, the Cold War, and you had uh, two uh, superpowers, the Soviet Union and the U.S., who had uh, nuclear weapons on hair-trigger alert. Although the number of nuclear weapons is much, much smaller these days, much smaller, uh, the, the status of having two nuclear superpowers, the U.S. and now Russia, uh, having uh, weapons, nuclear weapons on alert, really hasn't changed very much, and there are still enough nuclear weapons on alert to essentially uh, end life as we know it on Earth. So everything's changed and nothing's changed. Hans, we know the relationship between the U.S. and Russia hasn't been great, but we know that there is a treaty from 2010 that actually requires arsenals to be dialed down to 1,500 warheads. How do you think the current state of our relationship with Russia will actually affect the implementation of this treaty? The good news is that both sides seem to be talking about the uh, New START treaty in a positive way, that it is uh, beneficial and it's something that they want to continue. Um, and I don't think uh, that either side is in question when it comes to implementation uh, of the treaty. So that is one of the, actually one of the few bright spots in the relationship. Uh, David, do we have a sense of how STRATCOM was built to deal with the threat of terrorism, if not overall? Well, um, there is a, a document called the, uh, uh, the uh, Nuclear Employment Strategy of, of the United States, and it, it was uh, written in 2013. And in that document, it, it actually says that while the uh, threat of all-out nuclear war is remote, the, the risk of a nuclear attack somewhere in the world has actually increased, and that is a, a reference to a terrorist group uh, getting its hands on some kind of nuclear device, smuggling it into the United States or some, uh, some world capital, and, uh, and setting it off. Is there an overall sense, David, that if we were hit by some sort of nuclear attack somewhere, how the U.S. would respond to that when it comes to the use of nuclear weapons? Well, the, the job of the U.S. Strategic Command is to come up with uh, options uh, for the president. Uh, the, that's what that aide who follows the, uh, the president around everywhere he goes is carrying in that 50-pound uh, uh, briefcase he's, he's lugging. That, that contains uh, what's called the Nuclear Decision Handbook, and that is a layout of, of all the uh, options that the uh, strategic command has developed for the president to use. But when it comes down to choosing those options, there's only one person that makes that decision, and that's the president. So it very much depends on who the president of the United States is. Frank, David makes a good point. Frank, I want to ask you, when it comes to the proliferation of nuclear weapons around the world, what's your biggest concern? My biggest concern is that the North Korean government, to get cash, will sell nuclear tech expertise and potentially nuclear weapons to terrorist groups. Hans, how does a country respond if they were ever hit by nuclear weapons? How do you retaliate? <laughs> well, that depends. Um, I mean, in the simple outline of it, of course, if somebody attacks someone's with, someone with nuclear weapon, the turn is based on the fact that um, we have capabilities that's supposed to threaten them so they don't do it. And therefore, with that logic, you would assume that if somebody attacked you with nuclear weapons, you would retaliate with nuclear weapons. But that also very much depends on what capability, capabilities that particular country that has been attacked, how many, what kind of capabilities they have. I mean, for example, is it certain that the United States, if it were attacked attack with nuclear weapons, would retaliate in nu with nuclear weapons? I don't think there's anything automatic in the nuclear planning or the nuclear in the in the strategy that says that the U.S. has to retaliate with nuclear weapons, it depends on the situation. David Martin, Frank Miller, and Hans Christensen, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us.